Welcome to the Northeast Kingdom Voice. Today's guest is Tony O'Connor. Tony is a champion golfer. We, and we would have been on sooner, but our hairstylist had to take care of us first. Th that's right. <laughs> and he's a champion uh, racquetball player. I don't know about champion. And he knows everything about the Civil War. You weren't there, though, were you? I've just heard the biggest BS of my life. And... <laughs> But, in, you know, he is also, yes, you are an inspirational human being. I know you sat here beforehand. What are we going to talk about? And I said, I told Tony, I said, Tony, you are such an inspirational human being because he is. He does all of this, and he has only one limb, his arm, because you said you had the most shocking experience of your life. I was a professional alligator wrestler right. in Florida in 67. Yeah, and you and you lost all but one limb. Yeah, because I was out with a girl the night before, and I wanted to impress her doing the show, right. wrestling alligators. And that's how I usually start my comedy show. Right. When people ask me how I got hurt, and it's the first question out of their mouth, that's the story they get. The alligator. And you actually live in Florida now. I do, and, and I have pet alligators. Yeah, no, and, and you don't have to worry about your legs getting bent no, off. No, no, they come right up, they get on my lap. Right. Yeah, that's... That, that's I a, have video. Yeah. Um, so, all right, a little on the serious side, because I know you have, you know, you have uh, used... Because you don't call it a disability, do you? I know. I, I'm quite happy with who I am. Right. So what happened? I had some electrical wires in Brooklyn. I was 15 years old, playing in a freight yard, went back throw a snowball, and the wires had a lot of snow on them, and I got zapped. Hmm. Not electrocuted. I'm not dead. Right. Uh, yeah, well, is, is that... So electrocution, you have to be if dead you, to actually... It's preferred that you're dead if you're electrocuted. Right. So, you know, I, I've known you for years. That's how come I know, and by the way, I know one, I only know one other more inspirational person than you. My wife. Your wife. <laughs> I knew that G was coming. There's Putting no, up with there me. There is no doubt. Yeah. Gigi was able to overlook everything and even was able to uh, overlook your mouth. And, and, um, well, and you know, she, she really is. In all seriousness, you got to admit, you married a special person. Uh, the best person I ever met in my life, for sure. Yeah. And that she's the victim of my comedy shows in Florida. Oh, I know, yeah. I do, because most of my comedy is all about real life stuff. Right. So you, you laid in, you, you know, here you are, 15 years old, probably at that point you probably had girls on your mind, but not at that very moment, but <laughs> at, that, that, at that age. Sure. And then you're laying there and you, you're missing all but one limb. What was going through your mind? Well, I guess uh, it was my own fault I got hurt. I was where I shouldn't have been, and I didn't have an out-of-body experience, but I can remember thinking to myself, if I get through this, I will never feel sorry for myself. Just let me get through it, make the most of it. And I, I think from the first day I said, I'm going to turn this into an asset, rather than look at it as a, a sad, sad, oh, cry, feel sorry for myself crap. Hey? But did you have a few of those? You must have had a few of those days. Not too many. I'm sure I've had some. Oh, you probably still do as an adult some days you, you feel a little crappy. Uh, sometimes I'll try to do something on a car where I'm working on it with one hand and I was throwing them. <laughs> if I had two hands, I wouldn't have this crap. But now that I'm older, I just find someone younger to help me. Right. And I know one thing you were telling me, it isn't the big things that you have a problem with a lot of times. It's the little things. Like I think you said cutting meat you find a bit difficult. The most difficult thing I ever found in my life and I found that I was totally unable to do it, was change diapers. <laughs> I got out of, ch I have four children, I think I changed five diapers in all of them, and I, I used to put them in the bathtub, we had a hose on them, <laughs> I'd squirt them off, air dry them. <laughs> <laughs> I, God, that stuff's just awful, can you imagine? Right. So, but you know, if the wife's been out for two days, you gotta change them eventually. <laughs> No, you, I, I bet you, yeah, you could probably have learned a little bit more, but maybe you used it for no. Could not change diapers. They're wiggling around and right. poopies flying everywhere. Right. No, I don't want that. No. You're probably not supposed to bang on the table, are you? When you but you know, you know the thing is, is I now have grandkids like you, and I've changed hundreds and hundreds of my kids' diapers. You're a lucky but man. I have an agreement with my grandson. He comes to visit me. I watch him one and a half hours a week, uh -huh. and he's about 13 months old, like, uh, and I agree if he has anything to do, 
he, he had he has a 45 minute trip to my house and everything he <laughs> needs to do is done in that 45 minutes and sure enough he's done it so i haven't i spent I, 41 years convincing my wife i can't change diapers don't screw this up on me <laughs> oh, so, that's so, an experience that's overrated so did it up uh, um uh, so, so you never, you you never looked back. It was just you, you kept moving forward. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, because I didn't, and I look back on it now. It's really not that bad of a thing. I, I wouldn't be here doing the show or doing my comedy stand-up show across Florida. I did the Shriners Convention right. this year. I wouldn't do any of that if I wasn't a triple amputee. Right. I'd just be. I like golf. I'm not a great golfer. I'm a mid '80s golfer. Racquetball. I'm a good medium player, and I'm a good partner if it's doubles, but. It wouldn't be special unless I was missing my arm and two legs. Yeah, I guess and you do make the best of what comes oh, your way. So it's a positive. Right. And um, but you also you also retired from immigrations. I did. And I, I heard did. there was a, I remember I've heard so many of your stories over the years is uh, yeah. some nights it's really cold. <laughs> and I, I, I seem to recall that, that you said that people ski was, traffic. Huh? Ski traffic on Saturday and Sunday mornings, the guys would make me stand out there for three hours doing traffic because my feet didn't get cold. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I thought of do it, starting a new comedy skit, a stand-up comedy, because I don't do my one that I do in Florida up here. No one comes to it because it's gauged towards older people, retired, and similarities. But I thought of doing one, how to cross the U.S. Canadian border without a hassle. Tell stories about what went on when I worked there and probably add a few little things others have told me that are funny oh yeah well you know, on, on the serious side i remember you uh uh talking about crossing the border you once found it was really tough to get on an airplane <laughs> yeah. is because they, they thought your what did they think your legs were full of explosives i don't know yeah over in plattsburgh new york when i first retired we go to florida and this one guy kept giving me a hard time they pull me in they do a strip search on me every time but I got even with them because before I, about an hour before I went to the airport, I ate a box of raisins. They had me in that little room. <laughs> I, they didn't keep me there that long that time. Yeah. Um, of course, my wife wouldn't sit next to me on the plane either afterwards. <laughs> so what what brought you? Because you were you were born and raised uh, in Brooklyn. And what brought you to the? Community? I finished two years of college. I casually put in an application to be on. Uh, the Peace Corps or Vista, and I got sent to work in the Northeast Kingdom. I asked to work on the West Coast with children, handicapped children. They put me in New England to work in geriatrics. <laughs> I should have known the federal government. I ended up with uh, Tommy Hahn and Oxer days. Oh, yeah. Not many people will remember Oxer, I don't think. Oh, I, I, do. I do, I do. We had a um, time. The, uh, the, well, the one thing good about your accident, if it was anything, you didn't get drafted to Vietnam. Yeah, no, I, I, uh, my, my family and myself felt I should serve my country. I did not have to go in the military, but one of the reasons I joined Vista is to give a year of my life for my country. I, I felt everybody should. Everybody should be drafted as far as I'm concerned. Even now, everyone should be drafted, even disabled. There's some job for them. Yeah, I, I, yeah if you say drafted, maybe not into the military, but the Peace Corps. You should be drafted into the military. There's lots of non-action jobs in the military. Right. If you don't want to be a fighter, that's fine. Right. But you know, give a kid a couple of years of saying, yes, sir, no, ma'am learn a little respect. My son went in the United States Air Force. He did a 180. He's like, the human being he is now is fantastic. No. And I think sometimes is, I think you've got to get out of your surround. Oh, like, yeah. like this, did, whether, you know what I tell people? People love to say the people of the Northeast Kingdom are ignorant because they don't travel. Well, A, a lot of people such as myself do travel. But the other thing is, it's true. If you don't leave your, maybe not even your leave, safety zone, it, it, but you can be like that in Brooklyn too. If you don't oh, leave yeah. your area, you don't know there's a there's a great world out there. Even when I grew up in Brooklyn, it, you knew people on your one block. You went one block away, a couple hundred yards, you didn't know anybody. Right. So where did Gigi come into your life? I was a Vista volunteer. Yep. And do you remember Mammoth Mart? Sure. I was leaving Mammoth Mart, and this girl who I had met once, at the, she was a candy striper at the nursing home where I was a volunteer, she was going in Mammoth Mart, and I was walking out, she was with her brother Rick, and I said hello to her, and she said, oh, hi, Tony. I said, hi, and I didn't recognize her at first, and she said, what are you doing? I said, nothing. She said, can I hang out with you for the day? 
And next thing I know, I got four children. Yeah. I don't know how it happened. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure it out. Now, do I do I recall right? Because because you know a lot of people I don't even think know you're missing your legs, because you know you're suave and debonair. You walk that's, with a that's me, a sharp dressed man like yeah, ZZ and, Top. Uh, did she know at first you were missing? <laughs> no, there's a, there was actually. <laughs> We've gone on two dates, and then we decided to go swimming. We were at Nettos Trailer Park <laughs> on coming, and I sat on the dock. I took my legs off, and I asked her to put them in the car for me, and she's like. <laughs> <laughs> so I figured she didn't leave me at that point. She's probably a keeper. But yeah, because, you know, you know, I know I've, I've told you at ad nauseum over the years how you are an inspiration, uh, and you always throw her in because you do know, because, you know, she could have said, uh, no, I don't think so. Yeah, but no, for sure. Then, and she's been on what a forty-year hitch now. Forty-one this summer. Yeah, forty-one. Yeah, I'm, summer. Penny's had to survive me for thirty-three. For, forty-one. And when we were at uh, Cypress Lakes a few weeks ago, yeah. the power went out. We had no internet, no TV, no telephone, nothing. We ended up talking to each other for like two hours. Yeah. She seems nice. Yeah. Well, she you, seems like no, a nice person. Another another forty years. Yeah, another forty. <laughs> so, um, but then you actually. You know, you're you're a member of the Civil War Roundtable. It's it's always amazing the people you can uh, you would always a well you founded the Civil War Roundtable. You were able to bring these famous oh, people yeah. and a little known guy from Greensboro, <laughs> Chief Justice Chief, Rehnquist. Yeah, G, Chief Justice. I'm probably Rehnquist. the only person that ever goofed on him when he was Chief Justice. Yeah. I did, were you at the meeting? No. Oh, Chief Justice Rehnquist. I had asked him before he started talking. I said, you've had a lot of formal introductions. Can I have fun? He said, yeah, sure, go ahead. And I got up there and I said, I got it on video. I said, look, a lot of you guys know my buddy Bill here, and we don't kick back the case of beer like we used to on weekends. And, of course, Rehnquist is looking at me like, <laughs> I said, but we can still chug a beer or two now and then, because I did know him yeah. fairly well. So he got up to speak. And just before he starts to speak, I jumped up again. I pulled out my wallet. And he says, now what? I said, Bill, I got this parking ticket in Newport today. Can you take care of this for me? <laughs> he says, sit down. <laughs> and by the, uh, the listeners, uh, Chief Justice Rehnquist was a summer resident of Greensboro. You got Caspian Lake he lived on. Right. And, uh, but he know, crossed the border all the time at North Troy because he and his wife would go antiquing in right. Quebec. He'd come back through with overalls on. You'd never know who he was. You know, maybe you ought to try to get uh, uh, now former uh, uh, Supreme Court Justice uh, Sandra Day O'Connor to come because her she's grand- been here. Her yeah, her grandfather's from uh, was from Coventry. Not only that, I live on Brandon Pond, and the little brook that goes out of Brandon Pond is the Day Brook. It's named after one of her relatives. Right, and up on Pine Hill is the Day Cemetery, yeah. which is yeah. her family. So maybe that's your next No, mission. I'd ask Roberts. I don't go for just associate justices. we got to get Chief Justice Roberts. Well, that, well give yeah. it a whirl. It's but, like asking the best-looking girl in high school out. Right. If you're going to get turned down, why get yeah. turned down by an ugly girl? And, you, and then the other story, you, all, you were the man who would have been known as the man, you almost was the man who killed Almost Ed Barr, the famed Civil War historian. To explain that story, do I have to? <laughs> and, and you got to remember what Ed and explain what Ed survived in World War II, and you almost took him out. Yeah, well, thanks very much for making this a, a special moment for me. Uh, Ed Barr's chief historian, National Park Service, knows everything about everything. He and I went four wheeling. We went up this steep hill. I asked him to get off. I said it's too steep to go up. Two people. And he said, no, no, I'll be fine. But when he did, he held on to the bars in the back, and he's only got one good arm. So we started going over, and I, I knew the four-wheeler was going to flip, so I floored it. And the four-wheeler went up over our heads and flew about 20 feet in back of us, and then Ed Bars come down on top of me. And, yeah, he was hurt, and so was I. And uh, he was on the side of the trail. We were about five, ten miles from anywhere, and he's just laying there. And I said, oh, God, he's dead. And he started talking to me. He says, well, I'll see if I... I can walk if I feel better going caught his breath. Because he's 80-something years old at yeah. the time. So I said, I go get the four-wheeler, and I come back, no Ed Bars. <laughs> Where the hell did Ed Bars go? So I said, well, i got to go get help. He's probably off in the woods somewhere. So I get on my four-wheeler, get it running, I go up the trail. 
And like 60 miles down the trail, here's Ed Bars. I think I'm fine. I think I'm fine. I'm, holy mackerel. The guy's unbelievable. Yeah, he was shot up in World War II in some island in the South Pacific as a Marine. And I, I love it. I'll do his accent. He gives you a little. He said, I didn't mind when they shot me in the arm. He says, and I didn't get mad at the Japanese when they shot my ankle off. But there was no call to shoot me in the buttocks. <laughs> Funny as can be. Um, so, um, and the, uh, but you also use your, you know, your life experiences to help, to help other people, you know, especially people who lose limbs. Yeah. The one, the one story I love is for anybody who grew up here on the border, we all know Mad Dog Vasha and his brother, the butcher. The butcher is still around. Mad Dog has now gone off to wrestle in heaven. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, Mad Dog had an accident later in life and he lost a leg. Yeah. How, how did you, so you, you, actually went, you actually talked to him. The about butcher came through the border one day and he looked real upset. I said, we're talking. He said, well, my brother was in a, an accident and they're going to amputate his leg in a few hours. I'm flying out to Kansas City to be with him. Right. He says, can you give him a call tomorrow and try to cheer him up? And I knew these guys casually, right. not, not well. And I said, sure, I'll, I'll give him a call. Well, I did not know till afterwards that my call was right after the Prime Minister of Canada, Pierre Elliott Trudeau, had called him. And I got on the phone and I hear this, hello. <laughs> and I said, is this peg leg? <laughs> he said, what do you say? I said, is this the one-legged sissy making a big deal out of losing one little leg? And he said, who is this? I said, this is... Uh, one of your ex-fans that thinks you're a baby now that you're making a big deal out of losing one leg. It's not like you got hurt real bad. He says, I will kill you. I will crush you like a tomato. I said, you'll be hopping on one leg. You won't catch me. And I am working him up. And then Butcher told me later on, here he was laying in bed sad. All of a sudden, he's sitting up in bed screaming in the phone. Butcher's trying to figure out what's going on. So he says, I want to know your name. And I said, it's Tony. And I knew he wouldn't know who Tony was. He said, Tony who? I said, it's Tony O'Connor. And I still knew he wouldn't know who I was. And he said, well, I said, you won't have any trouble finding me. I'm the real man between the two of us that works at the border crossing you guys go across all the time. I'm missing both my legs and one arm, and I'm not making as big a deal out of it as you are over one lousy leg. And I didn't hear a word. I thought my life was over. I thought <laughs> he's going to kill me. And all of a sudden, he's belly roaring, laughing. He says, you'll fool the dog really good. <laughs> and we became super good friends after that. But, Super good. But when you talk to people, um, it is a shock, though, isn't it? When 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 you lose a limb. Every no, it's not that yeah. bad a deal to lose a limb. You're in the old school thinking. Everything is so modern. They're comfortable. You can do the same things you could yeah, do. Yeah, but when I yeah, but but when when that actually happens to some of these people, they yeah. must think that life is over. Lots of them don't get worked up. Nancy Poulin, I don't know if you knew Nancy. Oh, yeah, sure. She's fantastic. She's like my hero. There was a guy over in Richford hit the wires and lost the leg and an arm, and everyone else is feeling sorry for him. And I went over to visit because I love visiting new amputees. And I walked in and I said, "Hey, Sparky," <laughs> and I can get away with because I'm missing both right. my legs and an arm. You couldn't do it. They throw you out of the hospital. My uh, my uh, parents. I help people, or I push them over the edge, one or the other. Well, that's it. <laughs> uh, uh, my, I know my uh, my parents' best man was Bruce Gilbert. Uh, Bruce, uh, he was a lineman. Yeah, and I knew Bruce. He uh, he got he got hit once by electricity, and he managed to survive that. And then yeah, the second, the second time, time he there. lost a, an, an arm and a leg. leg. And, and he always wanted to fight me in the Bluebird. Remember the old Bluebird? Oh, yeah. Which always had fights. That was part of the fun of going there. Yeah. To watch the Saturday night fights at the Bluebird. And he always, oh, you got one arm, I'll fight you. And of course, he'd been drinking. And I don't like to fight. Yeah. I was going to ask you, you can do everything out, because you can. But how were you at fighting? I run. Or are you a lover? I, and these artificial legs can move quick, man. <laughs> so you I, you people would what? come through the border. I had these three motorcycle guys that... I had to refuse entry to, and they, they were real bad with me. And they said, well, who's going to stop me? Not me. Not me, babe. <laughs> I ain't fighting with anybody. No, you don't have any of those. Because I, I, I noticed that uh, the runners who are amputees, they have these. Oh, yeah, modern stuff. You, have, you don't have any running ones. Like nah. you go out. 
I'm almost 70. I ain't running anyway. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> My running days are over. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, I know I once asked you, I don't know if I ever got an answer. If you're feeling, <laughs> if you're feeling suave and debonair, which you always are. Rarely. Is, can, can you like get taller legs to make yourself like well, actually, taller? Actually, these, these legs are out of proportion to my body. I always wanted to be six foot. Yeah. But for me to stay six foot, as I get older, I'm going to have to add height on because I'm down to about five, ten and a half now. Right. I know you mo- You recently made a joke to me about uh, shaving le- people shaving their legs, and you said you don't shave your legs, you sandpaper them. Sand them down. And then if I have a fight with Gigi, she hides them on me, so i got to be good. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, tell that joke that you tell on your routine oh, about getting oh. up one morning. Why, do you have another 20 minutes to show? Yeah, it's we got, a little we got too long. 10 minutes. A little too long for that. Well, basically, see, I got in a fight with her, and I wouldn't discuss it with her, and when I got up, they were gone. She put them on top of the refrigerator in the kitchen, so I had to have a discussion with her about it. Yeah, and, and then she... Uh, yeah, she left left you with uh, left you without a leg to stand on. Without and, a leg to stand, but um, bump. And that's that's we go on the road together. That's the that's the uh, name of your doing stand up without legs. Yeah, what what kind of reaction do you get from the people? I get a great reaction. I I, I have people in crowds, you know, because I, I just did the Shriners Convention, the National Shriners Convention in Tampa, had a great crowd, and I've had people come up and say, you know. I was feeling sorry for myself because I have a paper cut on my finger or whatever it is. And you're right. You can turn a negative into a positive. I can imagine. Can you imagine today somebody with no legs and one arm having the nerve to go to the immigration or CBP, whatever it is now, saying you want a job? I remember when I went in 79, they looked at me and said, you have one arm. I said, I know. Of course I know. But you can't be a border inspector. Don't take no. When I do motivational speaking, I always tell kids in schools, think of what the extreme possibility of what you can do with your life, the extreme, and then double it, and you're getting somewhere close to what you're capable of. And, and that's it. And that's how come I wanted to have you on, because I think in the Northeast Kingdom, as with many rural areas where people are have a tendency to be a little poor, they they don't dare to dream and they don't yeah. they don't understand what is possible you like can. i i have you know the, and the best things is there's no there's nothing wrong with falling on your face it's just God. staying staying there it's like when i ran for governor yeah, got you the ran, crap beat out of me yeah but, but you, had, you had fun doing it <laughs> I, ah. maybe not maybe not, had, not so had, much you would have had less fun if you'd won i would have if I ever did it again, and I've been asked to run for government, I wouldn't do it as an independent. You can't win as an independent. Okay. There's no money. Uh, I had the greatest compliment. I hope Jim Douglas is listening to this. The greatest compliment I ever got was from Jim Douglas. I saw him at the airport a couple weeks later. He pulled me aside. Whether it's true or not, it was a nice comment. He said, Tony, if you and I had the same amount of money, you would be governor. Huh. I thought, I like Jim Douglas. I, I liked him when I ran against him. But here's the deal with, here's the deal with Jim Douglas. You could disagree with him politically, but boy, you'd have a hard time saying that man was not a good man. How can you not like Jim Douglas? Yeah, he, it's not possible. No, he he is. He's a he's a true true if gentleman. We had the big the Sunday debate before the election, two thousand and eight, when I ran for governor. And I got Anthony Polina here and Gay Symington. Jim Douglas is here, and these two are trying to make a big deal out of Jim Douglas taking the government car to go two miles to get yeah. groceries. So. Uh, Stuart Ledbetter says, Mr. Governor, would you like to respond? And I, I tapped him on the show. I said, I'll take it, Jim. And everybody's going, what? I said, you two are blowing smoke. You're wasting time. I got this one big night to make an impact. And they're never going to convince anybody that Jim Douglas is a crook. And wow. Jim Douglas said, thank you. I said, but Jim, you probably weren't the party, the life of the party at the frat house, were you? Well, <laughs> you know. Laughed. I Stuart got, Ledbetter's laughing. We had a great time. I got to be, uh, I got to be, uh, I know Jim, Governor Douglas, very well, and um, he's been on my shows and everything. While at the same age that you were, probably thinking about members of the opposite sex, do you know what he was doing for excitement? Oh, he was, political stuff, bro. Yeah, he was stuffing envelopes for Barry Goldwater. Oh, yeah. And he, that's, he, what he, that's his whole focus. And I said to him in another debate that we had, because I'd love picking on him, because yeah. we were friends. 
And I said to him, now, is it true that when you ran the radio station at Middlebury College, your theme song was Chattanooga Choo Choo? <laughs> In the 60s, man? What? Are you nuts? <laughs> and then the, the other guy, uh, Diamond Stone. Yeah. Oh, he yeah. ran. He was in the thing. He comes into a, a debate a half hour late. He's got orange checkered pants, yeah. a striped shirt, and red shoes, sneakers on. Said, man, I said to Cameron, you got to get the whole picture. You got to see this guy. It's fabulous. I liked him. He was a fun guy. Yeah. But, uh, well, we don't have about five minutes left, but, you know, I think sometimes people, whether they have any form of disability, handicap, or whatever, just, I think we forget to laugh at ourselves. Oh, you got to laugh at it. Everybody's got problems. Yeah. Everybody's got problems. Mine's visible. I get, I get some nice sympathy out of mine. Yeah. Well, that's it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's like, for example, as you were saying, you get some sympathy out of it. I tell people all the time. Yeah, it becomes. If, if I'm ever if I'm ever single again, <laughs> I am going to get my. I will rent myself a golden retriever puppy. Oh. Okay. Because you have a. Because I have golden retrievers, but when they're puppies, I used to think that every woman wanted me when they were little. But then to come to find out, they. they I are. think they're coming to see me, and they're they're going down to see the dog. So. Have you done something to tick off your wife lately that you're thinking about being single? No, no. Okay. We got, we got. I think about <laughs> about 32 years, and she uh, uh, she considers it. Some people go into some people become nuns or or uh, priests to you know, to do your godly work. She married me <laughs> to you know just as if I have any wisdom that I've gained throughout life being an amputee or not if you're happy in your marriage you're happy in life yeah. and money is important but not as important as being in a comfortable situation with the person you're with and I think so many I, I think there's time for divorce which I'm sure you'll agree but well, probably Gigi would agree oh yeah <laughs> but the thing is is I think people jump now too way quickly, too, too quickly. quickly. Because yeah. I think we can all look back over our decades of marriage and, and could think, have gone our separate ways. You could have, and yeah. you could have rationalized it. Yeah, for um, sure. I, my, you know, because I, you must have a lot of banter with your wife, a lot of humor between the two of you, do yeah, you? Yeah, I think so. Like my, my wife tells people that the only reason she keeps me around is simply because she doesn't want to have... She took so many years to train me, she doesn't want to do that all over Well, again. let's face it, we're like that ZZ Top song, Sharp Dressed Man, yep. that's us. That's it. But you do know, <laughs> women are the strongest sex, and I don't care no, what kidding. you say. No if, and I know. No if, you know, I, I, I interview a lot of people, especially older people. Oh, thanks, that made me feel better. <laughs> no, no, you're, you're a youngster compared <laughs> to the people I interview uh, on, with my other job, is, um, Men like to bluster, and I, I like to watch these the older, the older generation. Uh, the women were just a little more tactful, <laughs> or for right or wrong, yeah. they would let the guy think he ruled the roost, oh, yeah. and meanwhile they'd be uh, uh, they they were controls. Yep. They, they were controls. There's there's so much more wisdom I know us. which one in my marriage makes the decisions yep. and I'll bet money it ain't me no <laughs> and just think of this and they're usually right if God came down today and said okay men it's your time to start giving birth oh, I'm goodness. not quite sure how that would take place the human race would come to an end yeah we would come to an end we would yeah. there would be no no childbirth there would be would be zero yeah and we'd all die out. I went into every one of my children being born, I just didn't look. <laughs> my wife, my wife has been in with other people when they were given birth, and she says, you know what? She says, I think it's so much harder to watch somebody give birth than to do it yourself. I said, hell with that. <laughs> I, says, I, I said, I'd have as many no. kids, but I'm not gonna, no. I, I'll, wa I'll watch you have it, but I, eh. no, no, we're wimps, we are. No question about it. And uh, I'm sure we have some. Uh, we must have some redeeming quality. We do. Well, it's our. I well, can't think of any. Well, it's our good looks. The good, good looks. looks. And you know. Our hairstyles. Yeah. Th uh, you know, bald is beautiful these days. People actually keep telling yourself that. You no, know, you you look at these people. Some people, some people actually 
work to look like us. They shave their heads. Let me ask you this. If you had a choice, would you have a full head of hair or stay the way you are? Uh, well, oh, actually, come on. thanks to Todd Pronto. I need a prosthetic our, hair. <laughs> thanks to Todd Pronto, the producer of the show, he occasionally makes me have a full head of hair. He transforms. Forms. So one time he had a hairstylist hair on me. He and another, then he's into trumping people now. He oh, takes God. Trump's hair and superimposes it well, on I'd my like head. I'd like to see that. So, okay, Todd. Now you're running this, so look straight ahead, Scott. Yeah, so, look straight ahead. You guys both. So when you show the end of this show, we'll both be wearing the Trump hair. And thank you, Tony, for <laughs> thank you, Tony, for coming on the show. And as I said, in all fun. seriousness, you are an inspiration. Thank you. And I'm proud to have known you for so long. Vice versa. And uh, so I will. We will hit each other up in Florida this year. Yep. I was down here when you were just coming back. And do I get the ten thousand dollar check when I leave, or do you mail it to me for and the show? That comes out of Todd's. Uh, Todd's. Uh, Todd's. Okay. Paycheck. Thank you. That's good. And thank you for tuning in to another segment of the Northeast Kingdom Voice.